This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha awinala. Welcome to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm host Kaui Lucas here every other Friday on thinktechhawaii.com. For the last 10 years, I've had the honor of serving on the board of Mauna Loa Fish Pond Heritage Center. Loko Ia is the traditional name for Native Hawaiian fish pond systems. My guests today are Loko Ia experts and fellow Mauna Loa Fish Pond Heritage Center board members. Chris Kramer is president of MFHC and all around go-to man for the organization's activity and currently finishing a book about them. Brenda Ascension is the statewide local IA coordinator for Kua Aina Ulu Owamo, or Kua. Welcome, you guys. Aloha, <laughs> Kaui. It's kind of different to be meeting downtown instead of <laughs> what our background looks like, which is around the ponds. So um, just a little um, introduction. Um, Brenda, maybe start with you. Was, uh, what is statewide local IA coordinator? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, this network called Hui Malama Lokoi uh, has been meeting since 2004. And then my nonprofit, Kua, which you mentioned earlier, um, we started facilitating that network in 2013. So there's about 40 ponds represented in that network. And basically, they just get together to learn from each other and share what they're doing. And Chris? Uh, well, Mauna Loa Fish Pond Heritage Center is uh, community-based nonprofit and um, it's really just for and by the community so we, we have community work days at the fish pond and um, it's really kind of reconnecting our community to our food sources over there. Mm. Well I have seen you do everything from testify <laughs> um, at um, DLNR meetings and the legislature to um, catching little fish. So you, we kind of do it all. That's the beautiful thing about grassroots. But to give kind of um, an overall di idea of the, the activities, let's watch that beautiful video that, you're, um, that Kua made. Or was it Kua that made mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. I've been at this kind of game for almost half of my life, and it's been loads of Because there wasn't this kind of coalition, there wasn't this kind of, you know, supportive staff. There wasn't this kind of chance to bring others into the picture, but now that it's happening, it's, it's very inspiring. It's not connecting people, it's connecting people with places. And I think there's one element that I think maybe we should adjust a little bit more. It's, it's not just the physical restoration of things, it's the spiritual, the spiritual restoration of these places. Hope is organic. Hope is deepening. And with this hope that we have for our next generations, we can get along and be there when Ramo Upuna and the ones after us come. And, and now that I, I meet all of you guys and, and, and hear the stories and what you guys are doing and, and what we can do, I'm going to bring that Manao back and share what they want us so we can get our job done too. I'm very encouraged, a lot of hope for the future that this is really going to move forward and our culture is going to come back. All of our Ipana, all of our Mo'olelo, all of our cultural values is indeed in very good hands. And I hope 
I leave with you also a continued spirit of Holomua Liki Kako. All Imua together. covers a lot of the real beauty and the community togetherness that happens around fish ponds that we all so love and why we're still showing up uh, to pull weeds and uh, um, dig uh, invasives out of out of our areas but um, we have a, a map from Kua thanks to you Brenda um, that can you talk about kind of how it, it happened that, that these um, these sites are now being um, st having community stewardship and kind of how that works. I mean, it's different for each one, but can you kind of give the... Yeah, yeah. Um, so actually, fish ponds are interesting, especially the ones that are still physically existing today. There's a variety of groups and organizations and even just informal families and communities that take care of these places. So um, I think similarly, there is like a real range of kind of like the capacity and resources that these groups can um, get together to take care of these places. So a lot of it is done as volunteers. Um, very few are able to um, get the resources together to have paid staff. Um, but I think everyone is just kind of working at the capacity that they can and in that way the hui is really important for them to be able to support each other. And um, what do you think um, as you've, how long have you been working with the local ia? Um, I used to, I started as a volunteer at Hei'ia Fish Pond so that's oh. where like my work in local ia started. Um, when I was in college I was volunteering there. Yeah um, and I'm just lucky that I've been able to like have this opportunity to work with the network um, like that's my job <laughs> um, so that's like really fortunate um, so what have you seen as far as the growth over the years um, now well now there's 40 that are being stewarded how what is the impact that you, you see happening yeah even in this short amount of time um, since 2013 um, like some of the permitting systems have gotten more streamlined for fish ponds to do restoration work. A lot of people are making progress on their physical walls and so starting to think about other things like that, the availability of water that flows into their ponds or kind of like the surrounding um, like plant habitat that overhangs over the, the walls. Um, so I think people are just starting to like expand the work that they're doing at these places. Um, Could you talk a little bit about why that permitting process was important? Oh, that was identified as one of the biggest barriers back as far back as the 70s, I think. People have been trying to reduce the complexity and the burden of regulatory permits required to do this work to really revive these traditional food systems. Uh, and so as a hui, I think it also empowers them as a group to be able to advocate for those things together um, because those kinds of rules and permits affect all of them. Um, for a while, there was a very serious um, time needed and like years to get um, the, the backlog. Yeah. Is that, is, that, is that better now? Yeah, yeah, I think it is better because uh, what that streamlining process did was it brought all of the agency folks together on their end to work through a parallel process to coordinate everything that they work through and everything that they look at when they evaluate permit applications. So it's kind of matured from uh, 
them looking at fish pond groups as like well who are these people what are mm -hmm. they doing right to oh seeing us as um, partners mm -hmm. in in taking care of the land yeah and Chris um, so you're writing a book on on uh, tell us about that I mean why are you writing a book on this <laughs> well it's I think it's um, people don't really know about fish ponds right. or what they are or where they are I mean, a lot of people live next door to fish ponds that, that are ancient fish ponds and have no idea. So it's, there's a lot of room for education. And, um, you know, one of the real interesting things is um, as things start to get, when there's, when there's a real need for food sources, people are more open to learning about fish ponds because that's, a major food source. So we have some of the uh, pictures of the historical um, area where Manua Fish Pond Heritage mm -hmm. Centers are. We have two sites. Um, we'll get into that a little later, but they're both in Manua Bay, and um, you have dug up some really remarkable old um, photos um, from the 1800s. What are we looking at here, Chris? So this is. Um, looking on uh, Kalanianole Highway in Niu, and the big coconut grove right on the screen is um, right along the fish pond. So the... Um, Which fish pond? This is Kalao Ha'i Ha'i fish pond. And you'll see over and over fish ponds, a lot of times they're surrounded by coconut groves. Um, you know, these are food sources. So that's another thing that... Um, as we're restoring the fish pond, it's nice to bring back other sources of food and um, resources along with the fish pond. Um, and um, we have another one of uh, also of our area, the historical one with the Halikia'i. Mm -hmm. um, that um, do you have a, a sense of? Do you know what the date was on this one? I think it's a little later. I think this is 1930s. And um, you can see the great gates where the makaha, where they lift up the gates and the fish from way outside in the ocean smell that fresh water and they head to that fresh water. And this is something that happened year after year after year. The mullet swim around the island and on their migration and put in at each fish pond because of the fresh water that is inside those fish ponds. And then what happened to those fish? Um, all their grounds were blown up and <laughs> destroyed. So if you ruin the grounds, you're going to mm -hmm. affect the, um, what, what the fish. There's no, nothing for them to eat. And so um, they depend on that fresh water and the limu from that fresh water. So the, in that uh, shot we just saw, that the ridge that we could see in the distance. That was the uh, ridge between Niu and Kulio'o? Yes. Or, yes, oh. yeah. Mm -hmm. So right where our um, two sites are, basically. And that was pretty pretty far out in, into the water. So the do we have any sense of, or I, I, also we have the, the um, largest fish pond in our area, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So um, that was a, something that kind of got my interest at first was um, when I learned that right in our neighborhood we had the largest fish pond in Hawaii, and we didn't even know it, and neither did, you know, Kupuna knew it, but a lot of younger generations did not. So interviewing the last surviving fish pond keepers and learning from them and, and in, in turn trying to share what they have shared with our community and other communities. Um, we're we're going to take a, uh, a one minute break and then maybe when we come back you can share a story from, from one of those old timers. Okay, sure. Talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock. You can move a mountain, you can break rocks. You can be a master, don't wait for luck. 
Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas and with me today are Brenda Ascension and Chris Kramer, uh, fellow board members of Mauna Loa Fish Pond Heritage Center, but they are both uh, in their own right doing fabulous things in the local EO world. Um, Chris is writing a book and it's Brenda's a professional uh, fish pond keeper. <laughs> Coordinator, for actually. All the fish ponds. Yes, for all the fish ponds. So, so she's our, our, our network expert. Mm -hmm. So we can know what's going on in other fish ponds. Mm -hmm. So um, our first fish pond that Mauna Loa Fish Pond Heritage Center uh, took care of was Kalau Ha'ihai. And we have some pictures. Would you kind of tell us the story about that, Chris? So this is um, a small fish pond at New and this is where the couple system was broken on Oahu. And if you go to this fish pond, you can actually see out in the reef, there's a big break in the reef, and that's mirroring the name of the fish pond. Um, and this is a real ancient site that um, had been damaged in the mid-1990s when they were widening the highway. But um, this was last stewarded by Mr. Hara, and very special man, and we learned a lot from him, and someone we try to share his stories that, um, with the community and, and uh, kids that come down. So we have a, a, a picture of the, there were two houses there. We saw the one that was Mackay side, but there was, we have a picture of the inside of the Mr. Hara's house, which has a glass floor. And um, it's sort of a lot of people have heard of this place oh, or seen yeah. it. It's kind of weird when you just talk about it. Everybody, oh, I know somebody. Um, this is now no longer there, right? It's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, because as you can see, the, um, the condition was horrible. And we really um, are looking forward to being able to use the site now that it isn't uh, uh, a, demo, a demo site. And um, we have one more picture of Kalo Ha'i Ha'i that shows what it's like now. Um, mm. And um, w w what, I don't know about this particular group, but can you share a little, Chris, about what, what kinds of things that groups do when they come? Sure. Uh, well, yesterday we had Halau Kumana, and they were digging the awai and maintaining the awai that hadn't been maintained in a long, long time. Um, so that was exciting. and. Mm -hmm. Um, Brenda actually brought a project, um, and that was the floating um, pu'ohonuas, or the native plants that are floating in there. And that really um, was good for um, phytoremediation as far as sucking out all the excess nutrients. And um, we could see a huge change in the clarity of the water after we put those in. So that was project Brenda brought. And that project actually came out of um, Honolulu uh, on Kauai. So that's like an example of people innovating things in their places and then sharing it in the in the hui and um, it spread all the way to Hilo. So people use those Honolulu and Hilo also. And wow. Yeah and um, it's cool because Chris and Kalao Ha'i Ha'i have helped to kind of teach the technique to build it and mm -hmm. show other I have to say that's one of the, my favorite things about this as a learning resource is that um, the kids get to do mm -hmm. real science sure. uh, in in where it matters, where it's like, yeah, we need this data, mm -hmm. whether it's water quality or um, species counts and um, mm -hmm. other other kinds of things, right? Um, yeah, all kinds. Of we we took what we learned from that project and we took it to Kanewa Spring and. We didn't have the hoops, so we used old boogie boards from the side of the road, and <laughs> the native plants grew, and two, two days ago we had a, a light ula, which is a very endangered um, water bird show up, you know, looking from way up in the sky and saw this habitat, so mm -hmm. um, things like that 
you know, even in a small area, the restoration can happen pretty quickly once the yeah. conditions uh, are changed. So you mentioned Kaniwai Spring. Can you talk about that? We have a few pictures of that, too. Well, this is um, one of the early um, restoration days, and um, that's Alika Winters and myself, and we had um, some different folks from the community. And this spring had just been covered by um, invasive mangrove and all kinds of... So you couldn't even see the spring. Mm. So after several years, the water actually started to flow again. <laughs> and it was pretty exciting to have our... One of a few remaining springs in Honolulu that hasn't been covered or um, built over. And now it's, it's flowing clear fresh water and all kinds of fish come in to that fresh water and it's icy cold and I mean it's beautiful you can see the gold on all the stones and that's the groundwater that came back so when that came back all the stones actually turned color and it was pretty amazing to see that it is so beautiful so this is our our other site Kaniwai Spring, and can you um, explain what kind of a local ia that is? I mean, it's not actually, it's a spring. Yeah, yeah. But it's so part actually, of the... Yeah, so I think it would be considered kind of a, a spring that, it does have its own little away, but then it feeds Kaniwai Fish Pond, which is also inside um, Paiko, uh, what is it called, Wildlife Refuge? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know the official term. <laughs> but um, so I think because Probably originally it might have had sand, berm, walls. It would be considered um, a pu'one style wall, but I've actually never seen the outside, like the far edge of Kanewai Fish Pond. So I don't know if there's a built wall there or not. A well, local vai, you could say, for mm -hmm. the spring. For the spring, yeah. yeah. So have you been to all 40 fish ponds? Uh, no, no. Uh, no, there are a lot I haven't been to, actually. <laughs> Well, that's kind of yeah, good because there's more things to, to yeah. do. Um, can you maybe share one of your favorite stories about getting to work um, with fish ponds and oh, fish pond people? My favorite is just the, the hands-on work. When, when we're able to um, have an opportunity to bring people from other islands to work together at different local uh, uh I just love seeing uh, people learning new things and then also like the host group being so stoked that they're getting so much work done because they have all these skilled hands helping them. Uh, it's really different than just um, like a, a normal community work day where you have volunteers because other folks who work at local uh, have built up their own skill set and kind of can bring that expertise to new places. So that's my favorite, just the actual work projects that happen <laughs> at these places. Yeah. What about you, Chris? You're, you're also a historian, so you add this other whole historical layer mm -hmm. to your whole fish pond experience, but, and also a, a, a former teacher, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of levels that you... It's, to me, it's exciting to see, you know, kupuna memories and, you know, their mm -hmm. old timers that talk about it and then to see these things reappear, you know, so right now you can go to the fish pond and take one scoop and you'll fill a bucket of opai and we, we still have that but you go to a lot of places you can't do that and um, so just to see what was something that was the last several generations it just went dormant and now it's this mm -hmm. big reawakening it's it's pretty cool to see and uh, any any upcoming events Brenda the, in the fish pond world or? Uh, well, they have an annual meeting every year. Um, so the practitioners and the Kia'i local can come together and have that regular sharing. The, the thing that I, I really encourage people to do is just find the fish ponds in their areas and get involved because a lot of these places have regular work days. Like mm -hmm. how Chris mentioned that um, we do at Kanewe and Kalau Ha'i A lot of places have either monthly or twice a month or every other month. What's a, what's a good place resource online to go to? I try really hard to update our calendar at kuahawaii.org, I think slash events. Um, other folks maybe maintain Facebook pages or 
kind of use social media or their own websites to inform people about their work days. So okay, so there is a, a there's a calendar on on Kua. Mm -hmm. It's kua.org. Kuahawaii.org. Kuahawaii.org. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Chris, what's hap What are we gonna do? <laughs> well, I, 2018. We have two a sites. Lot to do. Yeah, what are we gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna get things cranking. That's what <laughs> we're gonna do. So, I mean, one of the things I, I see too is um, these are community efforts, but they're inspiring people in different agencies mm -hmm. when they see the community taking the lead and the commitment, um, then they want to assist. And that, that's pretty, um, hasn't always been like that, mm -hmm. but that, that's a big shift right now. There's, there, now the partnerships the are partnerships. starting to strengthen. We have some pictures of, of the things that, that some of our visitors have done um, at, at Kanye I, I love this one. Can you tell the story about, I mean, like, they get to paddle too? So, um, you know, we're, both of these fish ponds are located on a busy highway, so this is much mm -hmm. easier way to, this is the water highway, and mm -hmm. this is the, you know, um, they're on their way to go through that break in the reef that gives the fish pond its name. Um, and This is from the Huimala Malokoi. Uh, they had their annual gathering in 2015 on Oahu. And at that time, Heia Fish Bond was really ramping up their efforts to close the puka in their wall. That was a result of a 1965 flood. Um, so you can see here that the damage from that flood created a really deep, deep gouge in the benthic habitat. And it was taller, taller than me. And this guy, Kelii, is tall too. But you can see that they had to do like really extreme work to rebuild the wall in that section. So that's like a, a testament to the skill and, and ability of these people that take care of these places. And um, where is this? This is sort of more the typical, not the last shot. There isn't a lot of that, but this is sort of Yeah, more yeah. This is also in 2015 at Huilua in Kahana. Um, I love this photo because it just exemplifies the, the kind of group mentality that is required when you take care of these places, too. People can't do it by themselves. Um, and even though, like, in Mauna Lua, we take care of small places, we still need tons of people to mm -hmm. help. and. I like how this photo like, amplifies that. Yeah, oh, this, is what, <laughs> this is it, Kanye White Spring. And I, I just had to throw this one in um, in, our, in our last couple seconds here because this is, this, uh, we have these. Uh, Keiki fishing days. And Keiki fishing days, because what are they doing there? Well, a lot of them are catching their first fish. And um, it, I get excited um, just seeing them enjoy learning how to fish. And they're also removing the invasive species um, and you know learning the skills from um, like uncle fred has come from um, the windward side and okay. he's making big fish traps and and you know it's really exciting to okay. have all these experiences so uh, if anybody's interested in joining us for our next one they should check out our facebook page mount yeah. fish Pond heritage center thank you both for coming downtown <laughs> thanks for having us <laughs> <Chloe>. <laughs> welcome